Hi, good morning. Um, just to start with the injuries, if you can, is there any further <coughs> updates on Jamal Lasells, Harvey Barnes, Joe Willock? Uh, Willock and Barnes continue to work behind the scenes back from their respective injuries. No, no immediate update on them. Um, Jamal, we don't think serious. We hope we can get him back pretty soon. Do you think he'll be back in time for, for the Liverpool? Let's wait and see. Fingers crossed. It's been a disappointing last couple of results. A tough run coming up as well. Is the next period, this next month, maybe almost challenging for this Newcastle manager? Um, the, yeah, tough games coming up, of course. Um, but they're the games that we relish. We've had a lot of those games this season against uh, very good teams, so we're not daunted by it. We will attack it and um, give it our best shot. But yeah, recent results has been uh, a challenge for us. The last couple of performances haven't been as good as they can be, so we're determined to get back and uh, produce our best football. Newcastle don't have a very good record against Liverpool and a few cruel, cruel endings as well, as you found out last season. Probably see it as a, an opportunity to put the record straight as well. Yeah, there have been a couple of painful games against Liverpool for sure. The the game last season at Anfield was particularly tough for us. Uh, this season wasn't any easier. Um, the, I think the positive thing in both of those games, we performed really well and we were competitive and um, uh, gave Liverpool a really good, really good game. I think for us, we need to be a near perfect in this game. I think this is a, a really tough game for us. They've been performing very well at home, especially. Um, very consistent, really good team. Uh, so for us, the challenge is that we need to refine our best form and we need to be mentally very strong. Do you enjoy the tactical duel of coming up against a different manager and head coach in Jurgen Klopp? Yeah, I think every game is different. Every team's style is different. Liverpool have a have a way of playing that they've played very well for a number of years. They've slightly tweaked in terms of system, but the, the style is very similar. And it's uh, intense, it's unrelenting. And, and so we, we have to be really, really good uh, tactically. So yeah, the preparation's important. The, the delivery is almost, sorry, is always the most important thing. Um, so it's up to uh, us all to get it right. It's an eight o'clock kickoff on Monday night. It's caused some trouble for fans with transport, having to fork out more money for accommodation as well. Do you understand their frustrations and potentially having to go to an eight o'clock kickoff? Yeah, I always understand those frustrations. I think the the first thought always needs to be for the supporters, in my opinion, in terms of kickoff times and, and where games are played and when. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case uh, in these times. And of course, the fans, you've got a reception after the game against not Support as well. I guess you think you'll need them more than ever for this next Yeah, we do. I think that the supporters have been incredible. Um, home and away, um, the support we've had has been second to none. And again on Saturday, look, we, we didn't perform as we wanted to. The game was difficult for us. Um, but the supporters stayed with the players and made the, the environment a, a good one to play in. So a uh, big thank you for that. And just a final one from me. The January transfer window is, is upon us now, a couple of days away. Have you been given any assurances from the club that you'll have money to spend during January? Do you need to bring any players in? No, we haven't had um, those assurances. I think it's a, a difficult month, as we always say when January comes around. I apologise if I sound like a, uh, I'm saying the same things. But it is a very difficult month to bring in quality players. Uh, financial fair play continues to play a part in our decision making. So let's wait and see. Thank you, Danny. Just ask a couple, Eddie. Um, Six defeats and seven, if you include the the, the, the Carabao Cup exit to, to Chelsea. <coughs> has this been the, the toughest spell that you've had in the two years as manager and how do you recover from that, if so? Yeah, it's been a, di a difficult period. I think December was always going to be really tough for us. We were well aware going into the month how important the month was going to be. Uh, obviously, we've gone out of two competitions that we were determined to do well in. So the players have had to respond to some difficult moments. And I think that's probably played a contributing factor to the last two results, and they've probably been the ones that have, uh, have hurt us the most in terms of our, our performances haven't been where they want to be. So I think it's time when you have to be really strong and you have to stand up and be counted and, and respond. I think we've got... There's two ways of looking at the month of January. There's With the fixtures that we have, for me, it's a, an amazing month, a brilliant month, and a, a great opportunity for us to 
um, fight back and show our qualities. You talk next door of, of everyone at the club pulling in, in the same direction, whether it's the players, the management, the, the owners. Have there been discussions at all with the owners over the, the Christmas period on the back of the recent results? And, and if so, what has the message been? Always communicating with them. There's no different whether we win, lose or draw. So those communications are always are always there and everyone's working as a team. Yeah, and, and is this a time where you feel that everyone has to stick together? I don't think there isn't a time mm. when you don't have to stick together. I think um, the best clubs, the best teams do um, have that inner strength and that inner um, belief in each other and team spirit that they can ride difficult moments and they can survive the successes because both are challenging. Um, but we're, I've got no issues with, with the players at all. I think we acknowledge that we need to improve and that's what we'll endeavour to do. Eddie, I'm sure the, the review of the Forest game would have been an uncomfortable one, but do you sometimes learn a little bit more from results like that at home? I think you always learn. Um, it, it was a mixed, a mixed bag. I think there was, without putting rose-tinted um, glasses on, that there were some really good bits, <clears throat> uh, especially in the first half where we could have um, maybe looked to put the game to bed at times. There some frustrating moments as well, moments where we know we could have done better, highlighted really by the goals, which were very uncharacteristic of us to give goals away like we did. Uh, and that's frustrating and disappointing because I felt that game was there for us to win. But we have to learn from those moments and uh, yeah, come back stronger. Joel Linton back. He's been a big player for you. How much of a lift is it having him back and ready to start? Yeah, I think when <clears throat> whenever you lose a player of Joe's quality, someone like that, I think, and then you're, you're sort of without those qualities in your team, you realise how important they are. Um, not that we ever needed confirmation of that, but sometimes it's... Uh, it's felt harder, uh, especially with some of the other players we've got missing. So when Joe came on, I think again, even in a little cameo for 10, 15 minutes, he showed what he can bring, his ability in duels and uh, to bring that um, fight in the middle of the pitch is something we missed in the game. So fingers crossed we can keep him fit. Any more positives on the, the injury front in terms of players coming back? Um, <clears throat> say I don't think Jamal sells is a serious injury, so we'll await final confirmation of that. But fingers crossed he'll be back soon. Um, apart from that, I don't see anything um, to to come back in the very short term. Eddie Howe versus Jurgen Klopp always gets talked about. Can you enjoy that dynamic or do you drown out the noise? I don't think it's me against Jurgen Klopp. I think it's Liverpool against Newcastle. And I think that's how we have to look at this game. I think, as I said earlier, I think we have to be very, very good in every aspect of our game. Because if there's a weakness in your in your structure or in your setup. Then they will they will find it. They've got quality players, and I think it's a, always a great experience to go to Anfield. It's always a, a brilliant arena to play in. For us, we learned some painful uh, lessons last year. Hopefully, we can um, use that experience to good effect this time. I'm guessing if you can match the bulk of the performance <coughs> at St James's Park, you'll be fairly confident about coming away with something. Well, I felt for that game we were very good for 60 minutes, um, and. Yeah, very competitive in the game. I thought we were, OK, we played against 10 men for a period of time, but 11 v 11, I thought we, we were very strong as well. And then, uh, yeah, the end of the game was a, a difficult one for us. But I think we showed uh, in that game that we're more than capable when we're at our best levels. Thanks, Thanks broadcasters. Just one, Eddie. Um, you consistently refuse to use tie-in as, as an excuse <coughs> during this period. But is there a, a mental fatigue that comes with it? Yeah, the, the run of fixtures is in December was there right from the start of the season. We knew it was coming and we knew it was going to be a test and a challenge. That was with the fully fit squad. So <laughs> with the squad that we ended up approaching that month, that, that was always going to be a really, really um, hard month to navigate. So we did really well at the start of it, um, but probably felt the effects of the lack of depth um, towards the end. So... Without, you know, I've been very, very reluctant here to make excuses at all because I don't think that serves me well for the future or us well at, um, in these situations. Um, but with a in a calm, with a calm head, and when you when you analyse it, I think there's there's a lot to take from the month, a lot of experiences to learn from. Um, but we're very calm with the players we have. I think there's still a lot of good um, 
within our squad and uh, we're very positive about the future. Luke, Chris and Emily. Um, every conversation we had with the ownership group um, and board members this season said they knew this season would be tougher um, because of the schedule, <coughs> the extra demands, because the people were now a target. Um, are we finding out now exactly why it was always going to be tougher? Yeah, it was always going to be a, a tough season. That Last season was tough. This season's tough in a different way. Um, that doesn't mean you can't be successful and it doesn't mean you can't achieve what you want to. Now, we've had a few knocks this month, especially. It's been very, very difficult to take. It seems uh, things have just gone against us when it looked like, you know, talking Europe and Carabao Cup, when it looked like we were so close to, to getting um, getting there. And I think the players have had to take a few knocks and a few blows. But uh, that's nothing new. That, that, that's this game's full of those moments, and it's your ability to bounce back and to be strong enough and resilient enough to take those knocks, and then find the inner strength to go again. And that's sort of where we are now. I think we've have to let the dust settle, and um, we've got no time to uh, to wait with the month we have coming up. We've got to we've got to be ready. Over the last two years, nobody's really questioned you um, at all uh, as manager. It's always been what a plain sailing. Are you having a laugh? <laughs> um, how does it feel for you to be more in the spotlight now for the first time? Uh, I don't think, I don't look at it like that. I don't look at that I'm in the spotlight now. I, I feel like I'm always in the spotlight, to be honest. And criticism is part of this job. It, it goes hand in hand with it. And you say I haven't been. It, it, it feels, um, yeah, you may think that. <laughs> um, so no, you know it goes with the territory, and and, and I think uh, I've learnt to accept that and understand that, and no disrespect, blank it out, and just focus on what I need to do to help the players, uh, and that and that won't change for me. Okay, Chris and Emily, morning, Eddie. Uh, you mentioned Chris. FFP again before. Is the club in the position to actually do business, though, if you need to? Uh, uh, FFP is a. Is something that I'm still coming to terms with to understand myself. Um, I think everyone is related to the game because there's so many um, parts to it that are always moving. So I, I'm not going to give you a clear answer to that. I think the, the FFP is uh, very active in our thoughts. We're, we're trying to navigate it, work around it, and um, yeah, so we'll wait and see. And obviously the window opens in just a couple of days. Is anything close in terms of incoming? No. Okay. Lee Ryder. How do you look at the, the new challenge you've got in front of you? Um, do you need to go back to basics in some ways or are you going to need more time to build the squad? Uh, in what sense, Lee? In terms of the way the team play, there's been a few fans saying there's no plan B, which I don't agree with, but how do you see it? Um, yeah, I see it that back to basics is, is not a bad thing in, in some respects. Um, I, th I think ba the basics are always the fundamentals of your performance. So whether that's, if you're looking at your defensive performance, um, we're certainly from the last two games, we need to improve that aspect of our play. So yeah, I have no problem saying, focusing on the fundamentals and, and the basic part of defending is something that we will, we will do and we have done. Um, yeah, in terms of the plan B, we have many variations of how we play, so there's loads of plan Bs, but based around a plan A. So we're not going to throw, we're not going to throw everything away. If you look at some of the um, the statistical markers that we look at and base our performance around, we're still very strong. Um, we're, we're still very strong in lots of the key the key markers. So we've got to be very careful that we don't um, go too far away from what we do sort of even temptation to go like somewhere in Liverpool and play a back five or park the bus as people say and just try and get what would be a good solid point <laughs> yeah well if it was uh if it was that easy I think we'd yeah, we'd all be parking the bus um because and going to Anfield is a very very difficult ground and there's the record their record there says that but you also have to play to your strengths and you have to be a threat in the game. Uh, I say that many times when we go away from home. If you're not a threat the other way, then uh, I think that totally plays into your opponent's hands. So we will try and find a way to be solid in the game, but also a threat the other way. And in terms of transfers, I mean, there's always been a few names thrown around, but people keep suggesting 
that this this club needs a new number six to come in and play midfield. Is, is that where your your mind is at the minute in terms of a priority? Um, no, uh, that's not where my mind's at. We recruited um, a midfield player in the summer to give us competition for places in that area. Unfortunately, we've lost him for a long period of time, so that's that's something that necessarily we couldn't control. Um, but as I said, regarding FFP uh, being a big part of our January and our future, because it's not going away in the game, the FFP is going to be here for, for a long, long time. We've got to try and navigate that and make sure that uh, we're very careful with what we do. Just quickly on, I know will be a short answer, so just on, on Calvin Phillips, and you say nothing's close, is, is that close? <laughs> Well, if nothing's close, that one's certainly not close. <laughs> Actually, uh, Louise and then Dominic, finish this session. Hi, Heidi. Um, Jamie Carragher, in his column in The Telegraph, has made a, made a couple of points. He says that you have learned so much in the past six months, <coughs> and you will now have learned that you cannot, however thin your squad is, play the same ten outfield players in four straight games. And he also says that the style that you play is unsustainable with so many games in such a short time frame. So, discuss. Very interesting points from Jamie. Um, he also says that Newcastle, um, he s still believes they can't win the title in the next 10 years. Yeah, well, that's, that's someone's opinion. I, I don't really know what to say to that, to be honest. But, but do you feel that you, you have learned things that now, with hindsight, that you would have changed in retrospect? I think when you're, you're managing, you're always dealing with those types of questions. Would you do the same thing? You win a game, you lose a game. Uh, well, it's usually after losing, to be honest. Would you Would you do the same again? And of course, none of us, well, I don't have the ability to read the future. So of course there's things you'll do differently knowing you're gonna get a negative result. But you can only deal with the facts you have at that time. And my conscience is very clear. I think when I pick a team and make a decision, um, it's always in the benefit, or I feel in the benefit of the team and the club. As long as I have those thoughts and I've got no issue with my decision, if, even if it's unsuccessful, because then you will just analyse and you reflect and you learn and you try and become a better person. You also said you're the best manager of 2023 in that same column. That's, yeah. that's nice. It's gone up, in my opinion, in <laughs> about three seconds. Uh, and just on to finish this session, please. Yeah, just a quick one. <coughs> Jürgen Klopp praised your side at the start of the bump for that win over Manchester United, saying you played exceptional football, despite having to play a small group of players. To what degree do you look back at those games and attempt to get back to those levels? Yeah, it's funny with the Manchester United game because that the reality is that it feels like a long time ago, but it's not. And it was our best performance of the season. I thought on the day we were outstanding, uh, physically excellent. There was no fatigue. We attacked the game, I thought we were front foot and we, we were really, really good and you fast forward a, a few weeks later and obviously the landscape's different. But I think that's where I have to be very calm and go, well, that's not, not that long ago and that's the same group of players we have now near enough. So, of course, the, the aim is to get back to those levels mentally and physically um, and try and deliver those kind of performances on a consistent basis.